Hello friends, welcome to Medical Mello. Today we are going to see the topic acute coronary syndrome. What is this acute coronary syndrome? It consists of both unstable angina and MI, myocardial infarction. This MI can be STEMI and NSTEMI. STEMI is ST segment elevated myocardial infarction whereas NSTEMI is non ST segment elevated myocardial infarction. Let's check it out what is this unstable angina. It can be a new onset angina or any rapidly worsening angina known as the crescendo angina or any angina at rest. What is this myocardial infarction? It is a myocardial necrosis by acute occlusion of a coronary artery due to any plaque rupture or an erosion with superimposed thrombosis. There are two types of angina, stable angina and unstable angina. Stable angina is seen at ischemia due to fixed atheromatous stenosis of one or more coronary arteries. What about unstable angina that we have seen? It is due to ischemia by any dynamic obstruction of a coronary artery due to plaque rupture or erosion with superimposed thrombosis. Keep in mind the dynamic obstruction in unstable angina whereas stable angina there is fixed obstruction. This is the ECG changes in MI with serial evolution. This is the normal ECG with the P wave, the QRS complex and the T wave. Initially there is ST segment elevation and it progresses and later develops the deep Q wave and also the T wave seems to be inverted and it progresses with a prominent deep Q wave and T wave inversion with or without ST elevation depending on whether it is STEMI or NSTEMI. Let's see the cardiac biomarkers after myocardial infarction. Mainly we are looking at the cardiac troponin T or troponin I. It increases immediately within the 12 hours and raises to a maximum level and stays there for a much longer period. Then raises the AST and it reaches the peak by the end of the 36 hours and later on reduces towards the end of the 96 hours. And at last the LDH raises and increases the height and reaches the maximum by the end of the 72 hours and stays for some days and then decreases. Mainly the cardiac troponin in the serum are taken with serial measurements. We can go for cardiac troponin I or cardiac troponin T and it starts rising by the end of the 3 to 6 hours and reaches the peak by about 36 hours and it persists for around 2 weeks. And we have to look at the creatine kinase also. It starts at 3 to 6 hours and reaches the peak at 12 hours and it persists for around 3 days. There is marked leukocytosis, raised C-reactive protein levels and raised ESR levels. Regarding the lipids, there is transient decrease in cholesterol for around 3 months following an infarction. Let's look at the criteria for diagnosis of acute MI. There should be a rise of any one of the cardiac biomarker more than 99th centile with any one of the following like symptoms of ischemia or any new significant ST segment T wave changes or development of pathological Q waves or in the imaging studies any new loss of viable myocardium or any intracoronary thrombus in angiography or seen in the post-mortem. There should be any one of these with the rise of any one of the cardiac biomarker more than the 99th centile. It can manifest as recurrent angina, arrhythmias, acute heart failure or papillary muscle rupture. Arrhythmias commonly seen are atrial tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrioventricular block, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation and ventricular ectopics etc. This MI can also cause pericarditis, embolism, ventricular rupture or septal rupture, ventricular remodeling. Ventricular remodeling means in case of any infarct in the lower wall that is the inferior wall, it expands 
and the wall is thinned out and expands slowly with development of raised wall stress in the upper side and this causes a ventricular remodeling and there can also occur dressless syndrome the triad of the dressless syndrome is persistent fever pericarditis and pleurisy it is an autoimmune condition it develops within a few weeks or in months of development of myocardial infarction and it subsides within a few days the treatment we are giving NSAIDs high dose of aspirin and steroids the clinical features of acute coronary syndrome first of all let's see the symptoms prolonged cardiac pain the pain can be seen in the chest throat arms epigastrium or even the back associated with nausea vomiting heartburns there can be breathlessness and the patient can collapse or can have syncope associated with anxiety and fear of impending death what are the physical signs due to sympathetic activation there can be pallor sweating tachycardia due to vagal activation there can be vomiting due to impaired myocardial function there can be hypotension oliguria cold peripheries due to reduced cardiac output narrow pulse pressure quiet s1 first heart sound and appearance of third heart sound s3 and raised jvp due to reduced performance of the myocardium and there can be a low grade fever and can have complications like mitral regurgitation pericarditis etc let's see the investigations in the blood we have to check it out the cardiac biomarkers go for 12 leads ecg take a chest x-ray if you are suspicious of any pulmonary edema and we have to take an echocardiography then we have to go for an exercise ecg or the treadmill test tmt test and at last we can go for cardiac ct and later on coronary angiography next is about the management of the acute coronary syndrome we have to give analgesia like opiates iv like morphine diamorphine etc along with antiemetics like metoclopramide we have to go for reperfusion therapy with immediate reperfusion with percutaneous coronary intervention pci if it is not possible then go for thrombolysis and if the thrombolysis is contraindicated then we can go for delayed pci which are the thrombolytic agents the mainly used agents are tenecteplase, alteplase and retiplase. Antithrombin therapy is a must. Oral aspirin 75 to 325 mg is the dosage. But the first dose is always 300 mg stat within the 12 hours of presentation then continued as lifelong if it is not contraindicated. Along with P2Y12 inhibitors mostly used clopidogrel 300 mg first dose stat then continuing with 75 mg and we have to give some anti-anginal therapy like glycerol trinitrate or isosorbide nitrate etc and we have to give lipid lowering therapy like statins which are hmg coa reductase inhibitors the mostly used one is atorvastatin continued daily and the renin angiotensin blockade is a must Mostly used are AC inhibitors like enalapril, ramipril, etc. and also ARBs. Suggest a good diet and exercises and cessation of smoking is a must. And followed by rehabilitation of the patient. Which are the relative contraindications to the thrombotic therapy. If there is an active internal bleeding, if there is a previous subarachnoid or intracerebral hemorrhage, if there is uncontrolled hypertension and if there is a recent surgery any recent trauma if there is high probability of active peptic ulcer or if there is pregnancy if we are giving thrombolytic therapy then the patient goes for hemorrhage and severe internal bleeding followed by shock and death let's see the flowchart of management of acute coronary syndrome Immediate clinical assessment is a must, followed by ECG troponin measurement. Give oxygen with 
aspirin 300 mg orally and ticagrelor or crocodogrel orally 300 mg and metoprolol IV or orally and transfer the patient to a cardiac unit. From the ECG, assess whether it is a STEMI or NSTEMI. If it is an ST segment elevation, then check whether the patient is presenting within 12 hours of the onset of symptoms. If yes, go for reperfusion therapy. If it is not an ST segment elevation, MI, then go for fontoparinex or any low molecular weight heparin subcutaneously with nitrate infusion what we do in reperfusion therapy check whether the primary percutaneous coronary intervention is possible within 120 minutes or not if it is yes then go for the pci combined with gp2b 3a receptor antagonist like apsiximab if this primary pci is not possible then check whether the patient is eligible for thrombolysis if it is yes, then go for thrombolysis combined with fontoparinex or low molecular weight apparent IV. If that has failed, you are forced to go for PCI combined with the GP2B3A receptor antagonist. If it is a success, then we have to go for early coronary angiography combined with GP2B3A receptor antagonist. And what if the patient is not eligible for thrombolysis then check whether any delayed pci is possible or not if it is possible then we can go for this pci with gp2b3 a receptor antagonist and if it is not possible then we have to go for fontoparinex or low molecular weight heparin subcutaneously with nitrate infusion after giving this check whether any medium to high risk possibilities or any recurrent symptoms or not if it is yes then we have to go for again this early coronary angiography combined with gp2b3 a receptor antagonist towards the end after pci which with gp2b3 a receptor antagonist or after early coronary angiography with gp2b3 a receptor antagonist we have to go for maintenance of hospital medication with aspirin, tachygrelor or clopidogrel, with fontoparinex or low molecular weight heparin, with statins, with beta blockers and AC inhibitor therapy. And if there is no risk or if there is no recurrent symptoms also, we have to give this treatment towards the end. And this is the flowchart of management of acute coronary syndrome and this you have to study by heart. More about the PCI, percutaneous coronary intervention. It is a balloon dilatation with stenting. It is done immediately once the patient is brought with symptoms. And it is the treatment of choice. Once again, remembering you with the dosage. Aspirin we have to give around 75 to 325 mg. And with the first dose being 300 mg stat within the 12 hours of presentation. Then followed by 75 mg or more lifelong therapy if it is not contraindicated and regarding the clopidogrel the same dosage of 75 to 300 mg with the first dose being 300 mg stat then followed by 75 mg lifelong and the example of gp2b3 a receptor antagonist is apsiximab and the ticoglor or clopidogrel is a p2y12 inhibitor this is the end of our session Keep this in mind, no charm sparks brighter than that of a kind-hearted soul. And we doctors must be good idols of kind-heartedness. This is your Medico Mallu. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe.